On. And now I'd like to welcome on, as I hinted at a second ago, Mr. Frank Carini from Eco RI News. How you doing, Russ? Thank you very much, Frank. Thanks for coming on. Of course. How are you doing today? Yeah, not bad. I can't complain. The sun's not out. I like this kind of weather. So. Yeah, me too. I like a little respite from some of the, uh, from the, humidity. the humidity and the heat. So, uh, Is this a sign that global warming is <laughs> not the threat that we thought it was? No, I, that's, this is just the weather. No, it, that's, some people <laughs> say that. Like I, joke, I, joke. I know, I know, I you're, I know you're joking, but oh, there's plenty of people that do think that. <laughs> and most of them are in Congress. <laughs> They're in what party are they? Or? I, don't, I don't want to go there. All right, let's not, go, let's not go there. Let's talk environment. Uh, we are the ocean state. Um, I, I'm one of these people that I tend to think that so much of our um, economy is tied into our environment because of uh, tourism dollars. Right. As long as we have the beautiful beaches and we have Newport and Narragansett and uh, seaside communities and the tourism dollars are always going to be there. But if we abuse our environment, we could put that money in jeopardy. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're absolutely right. There's plenty. Yeah, we abuse our environment. I'm talking about locally, nationally, globally. Yes, if you abuse the environment, especially when in a place like this, it, it would cause big problems. It would cost money. If you don't care about the environment for this or that, it will cost money if we keep trashing the environment. So you might think that by um, allowing pollution for economic reasons, for business reasons, that's very short-sighted. Yeah, like putting in a fossil fuel power plant in Burrville, say. <laughs> I mean, I, I know that's not on the ocean, but... Right, but it would affect the ocean. It would affect the whole region, yes. Sure. More fossil fuels. What, how do you feel about uh, that proposal, uh, namely the fact that the Rhode Island General Assembly has done um, so little to, um, to thwart it or to prevent it or to scale it back? I don't think it's that big a deal, quite frankly. I know there was like, how many, two or three bills, four bills that were in this session. Sure. I guess the session is still lingering on somehow, but uh, that didn't, didn't go anywhere. But even if they had, like there was one that... You had to supply all the information, which I didn't shouldn't be a law anyway. It should be common sense that you need all the information before you can have advisories. But anyway, even if you got into all that and they passed that, Invenergy would just say, well, we're grandfathered in and we started this process two years ago, so would that even hold up? If they passed the bill in this session to require that, would it stand for this project, which started long before this bill would have been passed? So I, I, mean, like I don't no. think it's not for the General Assembly to... That doesn't bother me of all the things the General Assembly's doing or not doing. That doesn't bother me that much in terms of they really have limited power to, to stop it or to let it go through. Right? Which is interesting because we always think of the General Assembly here in Rhode Island, their powers are basically plenary. The only thing they're checked by is the state constitution and the U.S. constitution. Right. But um, be that as it may, these laws would could not apply retroactively because it would be unconstitutional. So, yeah, and so that's exactly. It might right. stop a future one, but I don't think it would have any effect on Burr. Right. And if we had this one, I don't think we're going to get a future right. one. You would think, well, you uh, think so. Are you Burr was probably saying that when they got the ocean state powers. So Sure. Knows. That's a good point, too. Um, so, you're, what's the, and you've, you've studied this issue probably ad infinitum, what is your take on the Barville power plant? Will it be an environmental disaster? Will it be just kind of bad? Will it not have much of an effect? Bring us up to speed. Well, I don't know if it will be an environmental disaster. Sure. I mean, and it's just part of the problem, as Bob was just saying about the Chinese buying Volvo. Right. It's, that's not the wave of the future. The wave of the future is solar energy, wind energy. So why are we building a, it's going to be a system that's going to be outdated in 10 years or 20 years. We're not... Why don't we build, if you're going to put something there, why not solar? So I don't know if it will be a disaster. It's not going to, we're trying to reduce our carbon emissions and deal with climate change. Building another fossil fuel power plant doesn't make any sense. Do I think it will ruin the town? I don't live there, but I wouldn't want it there. I don't want it there, and I don't live there. I don't think it's a, it's a, a good step in the right direction. I think it's a mis big mistake in terms of what disaster, how you, how you want to define disaster. Sure. But it doesn't make any sense economically, environmentally. Just a bad idea. Sure. Even my personal opinion. Sure. Despite the fact that it would create some jobs and it would give, it, would it reduce the price of energy around here? They say that, but I mean, a lot of it's going to be shipped overseas into Canada. So, no, I don't. I don't know if it will. I mean, you'll think it would protect us if, like, we had a huge cold winter spell, like we did 2013-14. But a sure. lot of that was the the structures or the infrastructure wasn't prepared for it. So now, then it was. We haven't had the problem. Granted, winters have been milder since then. I don't know. I don't buy that argument. It's always like, oh, it's going to create jobs and it's going to lower this. That never happens. It's always a bunch of lies. And it's going to have, what, 29, 25, 29 permanent jobs after it's built? Which is good, but is it really worth it no. if you're going to have adverse environmental impacts? Right. Like I always say, put, and plenty of people always say, put those people to work that are builders in the stuff that makes sense in places that make sense. Green energy. Exactly. Green sure. energy. Um, sure. And I, I'd like to kind of change, uh, change pace a second here and talk about a, good art, a great article I read on your website uh, about plastic in the ocean and how that it's, uh, it's a big problem. 
Uh, one of my favorite foods, obviously, I love seafood, I'm a New Englander, and um, in the article, you make the, uh, your website makes the point that this could endanger the quality of the fish that we eat, and it could mean that we'd have less of it. There are, according to the article, there are 5.25 trillion uh, piece, uh, plastic pieces in our oceans, and a significant portion of that, it would stand to reason, you would think, are in the Atlantic Ocean, which is on the East Coast, which we're so dependent on here in Rhode Island. So if you could just talk about that, that topic or that issue a little bit, uh, what, what can we do to, to try to rectify this problem? It doesn't a, seem like there's a lot of quick, easy answers. There's no quick, easy answers. It's a complex problem, but it basically is to reduce our consumption of plastic. So do we need to have all these plastic cups? Do we need all, we should be using, reuse and reusable stuff, reusable uh, mugs and less packaging and less consumption, human consumption. Or that's where so much consumption is taught, toss this here, toss that, toss this there. We've been doing it since, what, the 60s, since plastic became in vogue and plastic King, bags. Sure. So is to minimize our use of plastic. But that also entails, there's more to it than that. You just, if everybody stopped using plastic, or at least for plastic cups for coffee, there's so many other plastic things. And some plastic's good, it's taking people out of poverty. So it's not a simple thing like span all plastic or stop littering or better recycling. It's a combination of a bunch of things to, to solve the problem. Sure. And it's a problem. And we don't know exactly how many pieces of plastic are in our ocean or in, in our coastline. No, that 5.25 million trillion, uh, trillion yeah, that sure. you mentioned, that basically is just extrapolated from trawls that were done in the Pacific, basically in the Pacific Ocean and those, and those gyres out there. But, of pollution, so they're just extrapolating. There could be more than 5.25 trillion pieces. There could be less, but there's, there's so much of it. it. It's obvious there's tons of it, and it's getting building up in tissue. We're already consuming it. We're, you know, big predators are consuming it in the ocean. You know, birds are eating it. So it's in the system. It's in the food chain. Plastics doesn't sound good for anyone's health, especially it's not the, good for um, especially the wildlife and fish. No, and we have no idea what all. I mean, you might not be eating a ton of it, but it's building up. There's a bioaccumulation in our bodies. What's, what effects that can have? Nobody knows. We haven't done any studies. But it doesn't sound like it would be positive because it doesn't sound natural. No, and, there's, and plastics, their job is to, they attract toxins. So there's toxins that, when they're floating around, they're, all the toxins they're grabbing that are in the water, in the air, wherever. So, no, it's not good. I can't believe it would be good. It, it doesn't I'm not sound, a doctor. I could be wrong. But. No, it doesn't sound good. I'd be willing to bet dollars to donuts that it would be, has an adverse effect yes. on, our, on our health. So. Gonna, and we'll look at the cancer rates. I mean, it's got to have some impact. Again, I'm not saying plastic's the reason, but all these chemicals and pollutants are out there. Sure. Cancer's everywhere. So. Sure, absolutely. So let's talk about, again, one of my favorite topics uh, and least favorite topics is the Rhode Island General Assembly. Now, I know that you watch the General Assembly relatively uh, closely from an environmental perspective. So, so from your perspective or from your, um, in your opinion, do you think that the, um, the last session was good for the environment? Was it bad for the environment? Was it kind of like, like neutral, kind of like a, if it was baseball, would it be a foul ball? Would it be a home run? What do you, it wouldn't you, be a home run. It wouldn't be a home run. Uh, okay. I don't. Tim, my, my colleague, Tim Faulkner, who covers the state, I was going to answer this better than sure. I. I mean, I read the stories and see what's going on. I, I think a lot of their bills, are environmental bills, or a lot of the bills in general are kind of silly. I think we gloss over the bigger, important issues and try to fix these dumber issues, you know, like parrots and the parrots and campgrounds or whatever. We're spending time on that. I mean, it doesn't sound very important. No, I mean, no, you weren't familiar with that bill? I, I can't even, I don't want to waste everybody's time, but because then we're just doing the same thing they do. So I don't think it was, it certainly wasn't a home run. I don't think it was, you know, a, you know, strikeout, but I, I don't think it's a high priority down there. I think for a few reps and centers it is, and I think it gets. And they're not very lost. powerful, sure. They're not very powerful, or they, you know, they know they're just going to get shouted down. So I don't think it's it's a high priority environmental justice or social justice for that matter. Sure. The state house. They, as your website stated, well, the governor's office. <laughs> All right. Well, as your website stated, they did sort of expand some of the renewal or excuse me, they uh, re-upped some of the renewal energy um, programs that we have in Rhode Island. So we it doesn't seem like we took a step back on renewable energy. So at least that's a no. I don't a think good we thing. no. I think we that we did. I, I they kept a lot of the programs in place, or they provided funding if the budget ever gets. Whatever that gets out of that purgatory sure. it's in. But yeah, I mean, there was, they do recognize, and according to many organizations that track this stuff, Rhode Island does have a pretty good uh, record of uh, renewable energy support initiatives and stuff. So that is important, but there's more to it than that, in, in protecting the environment and the people that are most affected by environmental injustice. So. Your studies of the, speaking of renewable energy, your studies of the Block Island uh, Deepwater Wind Farm. 
Um, uh, is that a is that a, a game changer for us, or is that just like a kind of like a nice little thing to have, or is that gonna is that big for us? Is that gonna be a, a game changer that really moves the ball forward uh, as far as alternative energy is concerned? Uh, for us, the, na the nation, or just our region, or just the state. I mean, I think it's yeah, important that one. we have the whole country, the whole U.S. has five turbines. They're all deep water wind. And like the UK has like fourteen hundred offshore wind turbines, something like and that. And we're so much bigger than them. Yeah, and we have more coastline. So yeah, it's a game changer in terms of it can be done. Yeah. Obviously, there's problems with it. It's the first one. Any any power project is going to have its pros and cons, whether it's solar or wind, and obviously fossil fuels are even have more cons. But I think it shows us, hey, it can be done, it can work, and it's going to take some things that, you know, there's going to be some stuff that needs to be ironed out, but it's a step in the right direction. Do I think it's going to save the environment? No, but I, I think it's, we have to start looking in the wind and solar more, and it shows it can be done. So maybe we could build on it here in Rhode Island and elsewhere. Yeah, build on it elsewhere in the country or in the world, for that matter. We just can't solve the problems here. Right. So. Okay. Um, big picture. What do you think are the biggest environmental issues facing Rhode Island? Is it Inv Energy's power plant proposal, or is it something else? Is it the the, the, the cleanliness of our water? Um, I think it all comes back to I, people ask me that question a lot. I think I say it's land use, and that can mean building a power plant or not building a power plant because land use has impacts the water quality. So what are we building? Where are we building it? What kind of things are we building? How much impervious surface are we adding to? whether it's the city, whether it's down in Aquidneck Island, I think our land use needs to be have better management. I don't think we have a good sense of the impact. I think we have a good sense, but I don't think, I think that sense of what land use development does is overshadowed by the developers who just want to build and build. And I understand they want, you know, it's... And the need for tax. The need tax for tax revenue. dollars and jobs. I get, I get all that. But you know what? We also, like I said, we can build things that make sense in places that make sense or things that we need in places that make sense. I don't think we do that. I think that's the biggest problem. If you trace everything back, well, water quality is impaired because of land use. seems like your point seems to be that it doesn't have to be a win for the business community, a win for the uh, local tax uh, coffers, and a loss for the environment. We can get to the point where it's a win, win, win. Win for the jobs and the economic development in the developers' pockets, win for the uh, tax coffers, uh, revenue, and a win for the environment. We can get all three, but it seems like far too often we're so focused on those first two that we neglect the environment. Is that, does that seem yeah, to be Yeah, we're your focused on the analysis? Board room. Yeah, boardroom and, and shareholders, what they're making in profit. That's all we care about. You know, I, I love builders. I was in construction briefly, even though I had no talent for it <laughs> when I first got out of school. I'm sure that's not true. I'm, oh, yeah, I was bad. Oh, okay. As my father has noticed, I can't even nail a hammer on nailing straight, but, and he's right. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, you're not the They're only not, one. I'm right alongside you. Yeah, I couldn't build anything. Exactly. So it's hard and it's important, but we there's other jobs that are hurting too. We need teachers. Sure. We need public, good public school teachers. You know, I, I mean, they don't bring in a profit and taxpayers are paying for it, but the better we educate people, I know I'm getting off topic here, no, and I understand no. the developers, they need jobs and they should have jobs, put them to work, but there's other people that need to be put to work too, whether it's teachers, heck, journalists, whatever. I mean, From your lips to God's ears. Exactly. So what, there's more ways to have an economy than just building things that firstly don't make any sense, like a power, sure. power, a power plant in Burr yeah. Hill or wherever. Now, in, in today's day and age, 21st century, with climate change, look at that size of Delaware piece of ice from Antarctica that just cracked It off. just broke. Yeah. Sure. It, that had nothing to do that with anything. doesn't like, sound like broke. a good thing. No, not no. Good. So, you know, it's a good perspective to have, and it's one we don't hear enough. So I thank you for uh, coming on here and well, sharing that with you. us. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. it. All right. filling in. All right. going to be a full-time gig? Uh, you never know. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, Russ. Thank you very much to Frank for coming in here and talking about the uh, environmental issues, particularly the fact that we can address uh, environmental issues while also keeping an eye on important issues like economic development and tax revenue and jobs. So I appreciate him coming in there and talking.